Hello viewers, this is Pastor Kauton Mtizgo from Forward in Faith Ministries International. Uh, today I'm going to share the word with us on this lockdown Easter conference about praying in the spirit as a spiritual warfare. We are going to take our Bible readings from the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. My Bible reads, Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. This was Apostle Paul who was talking to the church of Ephesus, whereby he was encouraging them to pray in the Spirit. Now, if we see the book of Ephesians chapter 6, Apostle Paul was talking about spiritual warfare. And now we are seeing Apostle Paul encouraging the church to pray in the Spirit with all kinds of prayers and supplications. Why did Apostle Paul was encouraging the church of Ephesus to pray in the Spirit? I believe that Apostle Paul had an understanding that there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, which happens to be the kingdom of devil. And I believe that Apostle Paul understood that in these two kingdoms, there is only one thing that is similar. Both of them are spiritual, meaning to say, if the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, uh, when we pray, we should pray in the spirit. Why? Because the Bible says God is spirit. Same applies with the kingdom of darkness. If we are to engage ourselves in a warfare kind of prayer, if we want to win the battle, if we want to conquer the battle, we should pray in the spirit. Why? Because the kingdom that we are fighting with, it is a spiritual kingdom. That's the reason why Apostle Paul was saying in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against authorities, against rulers, against spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Meaning to say, Apostle Paul acknowledges the point that we are in a warfare, but the warfare that we are into is not a physical warfare, but a spiritual warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like us to uh, see something here. Do you know that spiritual things can affect the physical realm, but the physical realm cannot affect the spiritual realm? That's the reason why you hear about haunted houses, whereby you can hear that demons, they can knock the door, meaning to say demons are things which are spiritual. They can affect the physical realm, but the physical realm cannot affect the spiritual realm. That's the reason why Apostle Paul was encouraging the church of Ephesus to pray in the spirit, so meaning to say, the moment we engage ourselves in prayer, we should make sure that we are praying in the Spirit so that our prayers will become powerful. Now, the Bible talks about Daniel, whereby the Bible says when Daniel put his mind together to pray unto the Lord, the Bible says as he was praying to God, his answers as they were coming with an, with an angel, Gabriel, and then the angel Gabriel was caught in the spiritual realm by the prince of Persia. Meaning to say, the moment we don't take serious whereby we pray, our prayers can be caught in the spiritual realm by demons. Mind you, there are three heavens. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There's the first heaven. The first heaven is the one that we see with the sun and the stars. And the second, there's the second heaven, which I believe that that's where the devil stays and powerful demons stays. Because Paul says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, authorities, rulers, and spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Meaning to say, those demons in the spiritual realm, the moment we pray, while well, you are not praying in the spirit, they can have access to our prayers. So maybe someone might have a question that how do we pray in the spirit? Now, we pray in the spirit by praying the word. We pray in the spirit, number one, by praying the word. The word of God is spiritual. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17, the Bible says, And have the soul of the spirit, which is the word of God. Jesus Christ, in the book of John chapter 6, he says, The words that I speak unto you are spirit and life. Meaning to say, the word of God is spiritual. The moment one begins to pray while he's quoting the word of God, you are praying in the spirit. Why? Because the word of God is spiritual. Remember what happened. 
when the devil came to attempt Jesus Christ, the Bible says, when he came to him, and then he said to him, change these stones to become bread. Jesus Christ said to the enemy, it is written. Jesus Christ defeated Satan through the word. Why? Because the word of God is spiritual. Meaning to say, the moment I engage myself in a warfare kind of prayer, I should pray while he's quoting the word of God. Because the word of God is spiritual. Having the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The other advantage there is, the moment I begin to pray while he's quoting the word of God, I'm praying directly to God. Why? Because the Bible says, God is a servant to his word. So the moment I begin to pray while he's praying scriptures, God is forced to answer my prayers. Why? Because he's a servant to his word. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, he watched over his word to perform it. Ladies and gentlemen, if we go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, God said to Jeremiah, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, or like a hammer that breaks rocks into small pieces. Meaning to say, the moment I begin to pray, if there are some challenges that are surrounding my life, the moment I begin to, walk, to quote the word of God, the word of God is like fire. It will melt those challenges. The word of God is like a hammer. It will break those obstacles that I'm facing in my life. So I'm encouraging us on this Easter, on this lockdown, that whenever we pray, we should pray the word. We need to start the word of God so that the moment we pray the word, our prayers become powerful. Now another point, which is the last point. When you say that we should pray in the spirit, we mean that you should pray while you speaking in other tongues. Apostle Paul says, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays and my mind is unfruitful. Meaning to say, the moment one engages himself while he's speaking in other tongues, it means that you are praying in the spirit. The moment you begin to pray in other tongues, it means that you are praying in the spirit. Why? Because your spirit is praying and your mind is unfruitful. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26, For we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Meaning to say, the moment I begin to pray in other tongues, the Holy Spirit now is praying on my behalf. Mind you that the Holy Spirit is God himself. So meaning to say, the moment I begin to pray in other tongues, I will not pray amiss. Why? Because the Holy Spirit knows the will of God. Meaning to say, the moment I begin to pray in other, other tongues, I'm certain that God will listen to my prayers. Why? Because I'm praying in the Spirit. The other benefit there is, the Bible says, he who speaks in other tongues utters mysteries with his spirit. Meaning to say, the moment I begin to speak in other tongues, no demons will understand what I'm saying. Why? Because I'm uttering mysteries even to the devil, even to the enemy. So ladies and gentlemen, I would rather pray while he's speaking in other tongues. Because the moment I'm speaking in other tongues, I'm speaking. I'm praying in the spirit. Rikata laba yaha sakata. Hivre hi sakala hansu mini hintaya. Eko rapa kataya. These are mysteries to the kingdom of enemy. Now the Bible says, He who speaks in other tongues edifies himself. He who speaks in other tongues builds up himself. Meaning to say, another benefit, the moment I begin to pray in the spirit, as I'm speaking in other tongues, I am edifying myself. I'm building up myself. Which self the Bible is referring to? It's referring to the spirit man. Jesus Christ says, many shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out from the mouth of the living God. The Bible is saying, he who speaks in other tongues edifies himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to encourage us to keep on praying in the spirit. When you say praying in the spirit, we mean pray the word. And pray in the Holy Spirit, whereby you'll be speaking in other tongues. So I would like to encourage you during this lockdown to read the word of God. 
and to make sure that you are spirit-filled so that your prayers will become powerful. May God bless you.